Many of us have seen those shiny rocks on jewelries and fancy decorations, filled with different colors and shapes. But how are gems and crystals formed in the first place? In this video, I will go over what they are, the structures of them, and how they are formed. First of all, what are crystals? Crystals refer to any solids that have an ordered arrangement of atoms and molecular structure, so we weren't just referring to the shiny rocks. The molecular structure of crystals are very repetitive, sometimes giving them a symmetrical and flat shape. Take table salt, sodium chloride for example, which is actually a crystal. If we look into the arrangement of table salt, we see that it is in a 3D grid shape, with the alternating pattern of sodium ions and chlorine ions. Take snowflakes for another example. As we zoom into a snowflake, we notice that they are made of water molecules, or oxygen and hydrogen, in hexagonal shapes. This gives the snowflakes this hexagonal shape and makes them a crystal with this orderly structure. Gemstones, on the other hand, are defined as stones and minerals cut and polished specifically for jewelry. This means that some gemstones aren't necessarily crystals. Take topaz, for example. This is what a topaz crystal looks like, while this is what a topaz gem looks like. Notice that even though the topaz gem is still crystal, since it has an orderly structure with flat faces, a topaz crystal isn't a gem. As humans make a rock into gem through refining and cutting, though all of this, crystals, gems, and even rocks, are all made of minerals. Minerals are inorganic compounds formed by the earth, and they have a structured atomic structure as well. Rocks are formed when different minerals merge together, but crystals are formed when certain minerals merge together in an orderly fashion. The crystal structure actually matters a lot, as it can literally be the difference between a diamond and graphite. Both of those crystals are made of carbon, but one of them is shiny and a poor conductor, while the other is dull but makes a great conductor. Their only difference is in the way the carbon is structured. In a diamond, Carbon is arranged in a tetrahedron shape, while in graphite, carbon is arranged in sheets. This small difference makes both of those crystals very different from each other. So now, how are crystals and gems formed? As mentioned before, gems are formed through human-made labor, while crystals can be made in different ways depending on what it is. A table salt crystal is also made by us, while a snowflake crystal is made by clouds and air currents. But, we will be focusing here on the formation of mineral crystals, such as emeralds and rubies, which happens deep underground. Those crystals are formed from solutions, which are ions dissolved in water. For example, before quartz crystals are formed, they start out as a puddle of oxygen and silicon ions. As magma in Earth heats the solution up, the water in the solution evaporates, leaving only the oxygen and silicon ions behind. As they cool, those ions will try to stick to each other, forming this tetrahedral and orderly shape. Another example is ruby crystals, which are formed in solutions of aluminium and oxygen, giving them a hexagonal and orderly shape. This process is called crystallization. And there we have it! Minerals are orderly, inorganic compounds made by Earth, which make up rocks and crystals. Crystals also have this orderly structure, and they are refined into pretty gems by human activity. These mineral crystals are formed deep underground when solutions of mixtures evaporate to leave the ions, which form into ordered arrangements. I hope that y'all have learned something interesting today. Thank you for watching, and good luck with everything!